We've been away for almost a year, having accepted the challenge of building what people can believe with their own eyes, while also accepting that YouTube and TV don't count. Our quest started with questions of why the same side of the moon always faces Earth, and how do motors really work? Myths in these technologies, like Flat Earth, are quite strong with contradictions dismissed with circular logic. We cannot beat the circle, but we can point out the contradictions. All the best pioneer inventions apply principles from one technology to another. So that's what we have done. So here we have a sailboat that achieves over unity speeds greater than the wind while on a reach, i.e. sailing perpendicular to the wind. Free energy because of overunity velocity or inefficiency due to the viscous heating of water and air could be logically argued as the governing principle. Believe what you choose to be the governance and we will do the same. Perpendicularity of wind and boat velocities and the vast density differences of water and wind are the principle we choose to apply in the magnetic motor venue. And here we have a spacecraft on its way to Jupiter, contradicting rocket science that Jupiter is beyond the point where a rocket could carry enough fuel. The rocket scientists saved face by using a governing principle that spacecraft only need to carry enough fuel to get to points where gravitational forces are equal and then gain velocity by changing direction. Jupiter is now explored using what is dubbed a slingshot effect, achieving over unity velocities like a sailboat with a perpendicular velocity component when the vessel reaches the equal gravity point. From there, the vast difference between the masses of the spacecraft and the planet makes the rules. The contradictions in the slingshot effect are a slap to Newton's face. Whose slingshot governs the reaction? David of David and Goliath or Tom Sawyer, a slingshot with a rubber band? Peer reviews must comply with the myth that both energy and momentum are absolutely conserved on the way to Jupiter. But that presents a problem in the Newtonian physics venue. A fundamental principle of moving boundary forces being absolutely required to impart or absorb mechanical energy is the backbone in that training. While David and Tom's slingshots stored energy in different ways, the boundary principle prevails and all energy is transferred and conserved while the stones are in contact with the slings. On the first day of Mr. Harding's physics class, he taught the inertia principle that there is no force, only acceleration, when an object is not in contact with the earth or suspended by a wing, a parachute, or buoyancy. Constant force or acceleration were the only options except when the parachute was opening, then partial force and partial accelerations were the truthful explanation. Is gravitational slingshot effect a partial reaction? Would the craft eventually achieve a synchronous orbit somewhere in our solar system with exhausted fuel? Only alternative is crashing, I believe. When backed into the truthful corner, rocket science would concede Mr. Harding was right and respond with the term non-contact force, which N Newton called imaginary force. So we must add non-contact force to our list with vast difference and perpendicularity in order to contradict the myth. At long last, we reveal the Syncopetra slingshot, meeting all the requirements on the list. Non-contact magnetic forces, a vast difference between the permeability of magnets and steel to polarize the stator field, and of course we have the most important requirement of perpendicular magnetic fields. This fixture validates finite element analysis, making optimization easy. This configuration predicted and proved a 20% torque gain. Its successor has validated 80% gain, which may be hard to top. A rotomagnet is analogous to the spacecraft and or stone. The stator is a hybrid magnet and steel, producing a polarized force seen in all prior art slingshots. Here we have the dreaded sticking point that in the past has been nearly impossible to get past.
We readily concede these experiments are akin to testing a single jet engine blade. A complete motor would look something like this, but with five hybrid stators and 12 rotor magnets. That's the path the simulator indicates we should take to get to, by far, the most powerful, simplest, and cheapest magnet motor to date.